sure she is. Good morning, everyone. Good to have everybody out early this morning. Could we all please stand while we go ahead and do our morning pledges, please? I pledge allegiance to the Bible, to God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart, that I might not sin against God. To our Christian flag, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again. To the American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have the choir up here, please?
comes down. Everybody stand. Let's fellowship, please. Amen. I tell you what, that's good fellowship. Good fellowship. We've got a lot to pray for this morning. Uh, I certainly uh, remember the Sharon Horn family. Uh, unfortunately, she passed their Friday, I believe it was. So let's remember this family. We got a praise report on Justin Muse. Uh, he come out of surgery. Everything went well. So he's at home. Let's remember this family. Let's remember Bob and Dolores' son-in-law, Robert. Uh, we certainly want to remember this family. Sister Maggie, uh, remember her sister and brother. Kathy Dexter uh, still remains sick. We want to remember her, and she requests that we pray for Israel. Also, remember Sister Pat and Donna's cousin this morning and all those that we have on our prayer list. Does anybody else have any prayer requests that needs to be made known this morning? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir, he does. As I've always said, I truly believe in prayer. Prayer will answer or change all things. Anyone else, please? Yes. Amen. Let's remember Jeff's neighbor this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's remember Jeff's brother. Anyone else, please? Teresa? Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's remember this. Remember Chris, Teresa and Emily Irwin? 
Amen. Let's remember this. Anyone else, please? Yes, amen. Certainly remember this. And that was Brianna. Is that correct? Okay. Anyone else, please? Folks, this is where this is where you're taking to the Lord. We're getting ready to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, please, if you have one on your heart and you don't want to announce it out, just come on up to the altar. Uh, anyone else, please? Let's all come. I'm sorry. Hmm, two separate friends. Okay, let's remember this. All right, anyone else, please, before we go to the Lord in prayer? Those that will, let's please, let's all come into the altar and let's take us before the Lord. Amen. May I have the minute for the morning offering, please? Brother Jeff. As our uh, upcoming events, I believe February the 18th is the dinner, uh, is a scheduled dinner for that. So let's not forget this. Any others that I'm forgetting this morning? I think that's all, right? Okay. I'm sorry? Nine forty-five. Breakfast, everybody's invited every Sunday morning. 9.45. Debbie will have plenty to eat. If not, she'll cook you something. <laughs> All right. Anybody have a special song request on their heart this morning? We have the kids. All right. Amen.
It's crowded in worship today as she slips in, trying to fade into the faces. The girl's teasing laughter is carrying farther than they know, farther than they know. But if we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? Why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. Then there is a way. A traveler is far away from home. He sheds his coat and quietly sinks into the back row. The weight of their judgmental glances tells him that his chances are better out on the road. But if we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? Why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. Jesus paid much too high a price for us to pick and choose who should come. We are the body of Christ. And if we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? Why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we are the body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. Jesus is the way.
Amen. What a blessing. Amen. What a true blessing that is this morning. Anyone else have a song on their heart this morning? Okay, Miss Hazel. You want a microphone? upon me as I struggle alone. They say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing. Oh, how I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. There's a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. I know I'm not wealthy, and these clothes, they're not new. I don't have much money, 
Anyone else have a special song on their heart this morning? I tell you what, we should be shouting the house top down today. Yeah. Just think of all the blessings that each one of us has, and we've all taken advantage of most of them. But let's praise God while we're here. All right, Brother Bobby, if you will, please. Amen. You thought about what a blessing God's given us already? We have enough young people of all ages and sizes. They had a choir this morning. What a blessing they've been. Amen. Uh, if you were here December 18th, you would have said that it was our Christmas service, but it was our youth service. They did everything. Amen. One of the best services we've ever had at this church. Amen. And I guess the point I'm trying to make is God's still raising generations of people that serve him. And it starts by them serving in church. <clears throat> and the family that just sang here just a few minutes ago, you've got Regina and Hazel, her sisters. Regina's daughter, Courtney, was singing with her. Hazel's daughter, Alicia, was singing with her. Hazel's, Alicia's daughter, Aniston, was singing with them. So do you understand, not only am I just great at names this morning, is that they're passing down the, the most precious gift you'll ever ever pass down to your kids. Yes. And that is teaching them how to worship, serve, and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's how God intends for generations to, to live in this world. Amen. We serve him. We teach our children how to serve him. We teach our grandchildren how to serve him, great-grandchildren. And you've got a church. 
Amen. All right then. Luke chapter number 24. And if you're about to ask me how much longer am I going to be preaching out of Luke chapter 24, I don't know. But when I do, I'll, I'll share it with you. Amen. Amen. All right then. Luke chapter 24, we're in verse number 50. <clears throat> and the Bible says, And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. Father God, as we bow before you, thanking you, Lord, for the gift of this day, for all the songs that we're saying, for your praise, for your honor, and your for glory. God, we ask that you would bless those who sang the songs this morning. Lord, we pray for the power of God upon this message, for the power of God to preach it, for the presence of God. Lord, we pray that you'll search hearts and minds this morning. God, you know what we stand in need of, and we'll be so very careful, Lord, to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. For it's in Christ Jesus' precious, holy, saving name we do pray, and amen. If you look up at verse number 50, and he led them out as far as to Bethany, and I've been preaching on that for a few weeks, but now let's look at this. He lifted up his hands, and then he blessed them. Have you ever thought just the word lifted up? What lifted up actually means, and what lifted up signifies. It's the fact of it is, that means to rise up. Nobody held his hands up. Nobody lifted his hands for him. He made the decision that in front of his disciples and the last words they would have and the last time they would have together before he ascended up into heaven, he was going to show them a victory that they could carry on in their ministry. And that is you just lift your hands up in victory. Now he's about to give them the news. I mean, he's about to separate from them. He's going up to glory. He's about to set down the right hand of the Father and establish the throne of grace. And before he does, he said, boys, no matter what you face, no matter what comes your way, no matter what you have to deal with, no matter what method the enemy uses against you, whatever you face, if you are born again, if I am your Lord and I am your Savior, no matter what you're standing and looking at or hearing or having to deal with, what you got to do is do what old Job did. You do what others have done. You lift your hands before holy God and you let the enemy know this is not a defeat. You've not got the best of me. You're not going to quiet or silence me. You'll never stop the purpose of Almighty God upon this earth. He lifted up because he lifted up his hand. He had just defeated death, hell, and the grave. He he came walking out of that place. He shook death loose from off of him. He came out of a grave what they never did. But thank God, he said, boys, I know I'm about to go away. But he said, I want to leave you with this right here. Don't you hang your head. Don't you cry in defeat. Don't you say, woe is me. Don't you act like a victim. Church, we're not victims in this world. We're victors because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll overcome whatever this world sends our way. And thank God he said boys if it's the last thing I do in front of you he said lift them hands up high and let the devil know who you are this morning so Jesus lifted up his own hands by his own power. Lifted up means that you rise to a higher place. You go from being down here and rising up in authority and victory. That lets everybody you face, everybody that's facing you, that lets everybody know, hey, I've got God living in me. I'm carrying on his name. I'm serving out his purpose. I'm part of the kingdom. Amen. And thank God, lift up your hands and let the devil know who we are through Jesus <coughs> because he holds the whole world in them nail scarred hands does he not 
everything. Don't you don't you even think about the what the six o'clock news paints as a picture in this world? You get just a handful of people. They're doing wickedness. They're carrying out crimes. They get glorified in this world. But I promise you, there's a whole lot more that loves the Lord Jesus Christ in this world than hates Him. Amen. I'm telling you, we are the winning side. We're walking in victory. We're the ones that one day it's going to be standing right in front of Him just like these 11 hand-picked preachers that God lifted His hands in front of. Thank God there's coming a day that you and I are going to witness for ourselves when we cross over into glory. I believe, bless God, when He calls His church home, the first thing we're going to see is a risen Savior and those hands lifted up and said, I told you when I left you, bless God, you'd be here one day. But you never get discouraged in this world. He left them in victory. He lifted up his hands. May I remind you that it was those hands before they were nail scarred, before they had the nails pierced, before he ever went to the cross, before he ever shed his blood. He looked all the way from beginning to the end. He saw this day coming. Every time as he gathered on his knees and he refused to quit till he was done, he had in his mind, I want a son. I want a man named Adam. I want to form him from the dust of the earth. It took those two hands that he laid upon that cross that they drove the nails through. And as he got on his knees and he gathered the dust and he kept gathering the dust and he formed and he molded until Adam looked exactly like he was supposed to. And what God had in his mind at now at the purpose of his hands, he now had a man. He had someone. He had a son. And he leaned down and breathed the breath of life. And it was that day that he said I know what's going to happen the devil ain't got me fooled I know they're going to sin I know they'll be cast out of the garden and I know there's going to be a savior and there ain't but one savior in this entire universe that could have paid the sin debt that could have paid the price that could have made this day possible how can he lift his hands because those 11 preachers standing in front of him started in the garden of Eden and when the devil says it's over You'll never have a family. They'll never enter into heaven. They'll never be a New Testament church. Jesus came that day and he said, I'm buying back every single thing that Adam gave away, everything the devil tried to steal. He says it's mine. How could he raise those nail-scarred hands in victory? Because the promise he made in the Garden of Eden, he just fulfilled every bit of that. My sin debt and yours is paid in full. Heaven's going to be our home. He paid the price. That's how he can stand in front of them and raise those hands in victory. He lifted up his hands because he had just came out and defeated death, hell, and the grave. He said, that's how I can raise my hands. I can promise you, dear friend, no matter what your emotion is telling you this morning, no matter what the devil's whispering in your ear, no matter what you may think of your own life in Christ, I can promise you, you'll have more victories and you'll have defeats in your life with Jesus. <coughs> you just look at how many times the devil's tried to tear down this church and other churches just like us. But here it is on Sunday morning. It's cold. It's wet. It's rainy. And if you look at the disposition of the weather out yonder, it doesn't give you much of a facelift this morning. It don't put a smile on your face. It don't put a skip in your hop. It's what it does is try to tell you it's a miserable morning. But thank God when you get on this side of that door out yonder or that one right there, either one, I want you to understand the sun is up this morning. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He met us at the door. He's already been here before. Before we ever got up this morning, He's prepared this place to be holy ground. How is it that when it looks so bad out there and the 6 o'clock news says your world's falling apart, how is it that you can come in this church and lift your hands before God because that world's falling apart? But my, bless God, my world is just fine because my world has got Jesus the Christ in it and the devil can't tear down what God Himself holds together when he lifts his hands. Amen. (coughs) 
He let a foreign man out of the dust of the earth because he knew that man that he worked so hard on and it's the only part of his creation that his hands ever touched. His word spoke this universe into existence. But when it came to Adam, he said, no, no, no. He said, speaking will not do. I'm going to take my hands. I'm going to gather the dust. I'm going to form him into my likeness and my image. I'll give him the gift of life. And when he sins and he gives it all away, I'm going to show up one day in Israel I'm going to Golgotha I'm laid down on that cross I'm going to let them pin, pin, pin my nails I'm going to let them nail my hands and nail my feet and he said when that happens he said I could call down ten thousands of angels but I won't whip a word I'm going to pay that sin debt because that's my handiwork and because of what he did and redid with Adam he's got eleven hand called preachers he's never had preachers this world had never had preachers until he called them out from where he did whether they be tax collectors or fishermen this world had prophets this world had priests this world had never had preachers and God looked at him and says boys I've got you set up for a victory amen don't you worry about what Rome says don't worry listen to the unbelieving Jews don't let the devil whisper and tear it down I said bless God you got victory amen So God sent him out of here. He lifted up his hands. Those hands right there has healed every manner of sickness in his ministry, did they not? He never had an illness he couldn't heal. He never had a demon he couldn't cast out. There wasn't even a leprosy that denied him the victory. If they're blind, they could see. If they're lame, they could walk. If they're dumb, they could speak. If they couldn't hear, they could hear. If they're bowed over for 18 years, let's God thank God he'd show up one day and he'd loosen them. If they're dead for four days he'd raise them from the dead whatever their need was he met them with those hands yes yes you want to know why he could lift his hands in victory he'd already defeated death hell and the grave he's already healed every illness he's already took authority over every demon he left them with power amen and he did us did he not let me move on ahead You see, not only could he heal the sickness, but he could calm the fears. You notice what them hands, it's those hands when he was be on the come out of the ship and he'd get on the belly of that boat and he'd stand between those disciples and the storm and he'd rebuke the wind. He'd hold those hands up and once they was whatever it was between him and his disciples, it had to quit. You can't go past those hands. You can't go past that voice. You can't get past the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only do demons fear and tremble at the mention of his name not only does sickness have to go away but here's the thing even the elements and the water and the wind everything obeys him he has complete control and he has command he was letting them boys know you're not preaching for just anybody but you're preaching for the risen savior my name is Jesus my daddy named me before I was ever born and I'm leaving you with power I'm leaving you with authority he wasn't sending them out as sheep among wolves bless God he was sending them out with the power of almighty God and the spoken word that he had he gave them that gift they could heal and Peter could raise the dead and they could do what Jesus did he's sending them out to walk in victory amen So he could lift up his hands because he knew who he was looking at. He's the one that called them. He's the one that saved them. He's the one that in just ten short days of this meeting is about to send the God, the Holy Ghost out of heaven. And if they think they had a dose of authority with just what Jesus was telling them, bless God, wait till God, the Holy Ghost, moves in them. Amen? He took those hands and not only could he take those hands and calm the fears, but he could bless food. You ever thought of how it is? You've got over 5,000 men. You've got women and children. You've got more than 15,000 hungry people. None of them have any money. There's no food trucks. There's no food court. There's nobody passing out anything. But those disciples looked at those hands and all they had to offer was two fish and five little loaves. That was 
wouldn't even feed two disciples. They'd have went away hungry. But they saw something that they'd never seen before. He took that was just a seed for him to use. He took that and he blessed it. He made them let them know that every bite of food that you and I put in our mouth, it comes from the hand of Almighty God. Before he ever break it, he blessed it. When's the last time, dear friend, you bowed your head at home or in a restaurant? When's the last time you prayed in front of your kids that this doesn't just come from the grocery store? This comes from the hand of Almighty God. He made this thing possible. But because the grocery store could be full of groceries if you ain't got the money to go and get it. You're just as hungry as if there was no food on those shelves. But God made a way. He not only feeds you at home, but you come to this church on Sunday morning at Sunday school and be here at 945. Not only will you get fed from the bread of life and from the Bible, bless God these ladies that give you sausage and biscuits and whatever else is out there and any kind of dessert. What I I'm trying to let you know this morning is is that for every time you set your something in front of your mouth every time that you put food in a plate every time you go to a refrigerator every time that you open a cabinet that's a gift from Almighty God how can the world can you preach and not know that the very food that you and I eat it comes from the hand of God and if nobody else knew it there was 11 God called preachers said I ain't worried about it I don't need a job. I don't need a paycheck. If God's will is for my job is to preach this new kingdom and preach this New Testament church and preach the gospel of Jesus and preach a risen Savior, my God that met my need that day, He'll meet my need every day. So God, He lifted up His hands because He took those hands and He not only did He bless those two fish and five loaves, but He began to break it. And he's the only one that can separate food bites and multiply it. So now he blessed them. How can he lift up his hands? He can lift up his hands because he knows that they're going, he's going to take care of their physical needs. He's opened the blinded eyes. But may I also remind you about the Savior I'm preaching about. Is sometimes those hands can dispense judgment. Oh, you mean Jesus Christ, that God that's just, that blesses on every hand, that God that just takes care of our enemies, that God that puts breath in our lungs just every few seconds, that God that just woke me up today, that God that gave me the gift and paid the salvation. May I remind you, you do not want to be in a money changer trying to steal from God's people in God's house. You know what I'm talking about. He looked at them. They gave them time to straighten up. He braided some corn together and he's saying I know I'm about to get a whipping but I'm about to do something that you wasn't expecting he took those cords and said you've made my father's house a den of thieves and he whipped them out of there don't you ever think that my savior was a wimp that he wouldn't take care of business amen he'll answer your prayers he'll forgive your sins he'll die for your cause he'll, he'll, take, care, he'll take care of every enemy but if you cross him and you do wrong to him and you do it in his name he will chastise you he will judge you he will make sure that you understand that if you belong to him that you've got to repent of the wrongs that you do he'll judge the sins will he not and your sins will find you out let me just preach on you see when he came out of the grave, he would eternally bear the nail scars as a reminder of what it cost for us to be called by his name. He paid a price. Does the Bible not say he was marred more than any man? Does the Bible not say that he shed every drop of his blood and paid that sin debt? But you understand, he kept those scars as a reminder of how much he loved us. I've preached it so many times. The angels never got a second chance. Repentance was never allowed to them. Once they sinned, they were out. 
hell and the lake of fire will be their eternal home one day. But thank God for a God that looked down and he saw our flaws. He saw the way we were. He saw how weak-spirited we could be. And he's saying, I'm going to have to give them what the angels did not get. It's not that we deserve it. It's not that we have earned it. It's the fact of his grace and his mercy. And he loved us enough that if he didn't pay the sin debt himself, we could never pay it. If it wasn't for the fact that he established the throne of grace and gave us mercy instead of judgment, we'd never survive in this life. But thank God he loved us enough that he forgives our sins. Every sin we committed is already under the blood. If we'll just ask God to forgive it, thank God he will. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> but let me just preach on a little more. You see, his hands not only stop the storm, not only do they bring in the peace, but they also comfort us in the time of death. Have you ever thought about how many times that Jesus looked down throughout the expanses of eternity? He saw every time somebody we loved would die. He saw every funeral. He saw every tear we shed. He saw the sleepless nights. He saw our stomach just churned up. He saw the fact that we couldn't find peace and we had no comfort. And he's saying, I know exactly what you're going through. He knows what it's like to die. He knows what it's like to have somebody he loves die. He loved Lazarus. He loved Mary and Martha. He allowed him to be dead four days before he came. He knows the turmoil and he also knows that there's times that you need something from up above that, that we don't have the words to say. We can't find the scripture that helps. We don't have what, you're, what it is that you're yearning for. But God who knows every single one of us, he knows what we stand in need of. He knows what we need in the dark hours when we're alone and we can't find comfort. It's God right then that will take those nail scarred hands and he comes down out of heaven and when nobody else can help he'll take in the secret places he'll take you when you're alone in the dark. He'll take those nail scarred hands and he'll put them around you and he'll love you like nobody else can and he offers the comfort nobody else can offer. What I'm trying to tell you is this he can lift his hands because he's already faced death he knows what it's like to die he knows what it's like to lose someone he loves he knows what you're going through he was touched on every emotion just like you and I he was tempted on all corners just like you and I and he knows that when he when you need him the most it's God that comes in the secret times that gives you the most help that gives you the most comfort because those nail scarred hands they can do more than just lift up because God's saying I know that you're hurting tonight but thank God joy comes in the morning it's God that takes those nail scarred hands and wraps them around you and holds them tight that means he can't let nobody that hurt you in your time of bereavement in your time when you need comfort in your time when you're weak and the enemy tries to jump on you when you're suffering and going through that time and God moves down he runs everybody away and he brings the peace that passes all understanding and he comforts you with those hands. <coughs> but he parts some things with those hands too, does he not? You remember when Moses led the children out of Egypt and they came upon the Red Sea and they were thinking, boy, we were slaves for the last four generations. We ain't been loose 20 minutes and we've got a Red Sea. We can't cross over. We can't go around. There's no boats. We can't get to the other side. And there's Pharaoh and his entire army. What are we going to do? Moses said, just stand still and just see a miracle coming right from God. Nobody could see it happening. Nobody thought the sea would ever part. Nobody could build a bridge. Nobody could get a boat. Nobody could do anything. But they got to see God 
through, through Moses and his rod part the Red Sea. They got to walk through on dry land. You know what God was trying to teach them? He's trying to say when you can't do it, when it don't make sense, you don't have a plan, you can't figure it out, there's no way around, there's no way over. He said, I'm the God that can lift my hand. I can put the power of God in the rod of God that Moses is carrying. I can tell him just stand still and watch me be God. And Moses lift his hand and he lifted the rod of God in it and the next thing you know the winds began to blow and the sea began to part what God is saying I came to part some things in this world I came to part sickness away from health I came to part darkness away from daylight I came to part sin away from forgiving I came to part death from life I came to part to save from the lost I came to part some things in this world that you and I don't have the ability nor the authority to part but thank God those lifted those hands because he's saying I'm separating some things ain't it good to know that when we're a child of God he can get the sin out of our life and replace it thank God with salvation he separates heaven from hell and ain't you glad from that if I don't only say let me see how much longer I can do this You see, he lifted up his hands because he knew something that nobody else knew at that time. You see, being a child of God, whether you're a preacher, a deacon, a singer, whether you're just saved, which is just good. You and I only know a little bit at a time about God's will and God's plan every day, don't we? He didn't tell he didn't tell those boys the plan the end from the beginning. He didn't tell them how to go about everything. He didn't micromanage. He didn't give them every little detail. But the one thing he looked at them and he lifted up his hands. He was about to plant a seed. He was about to start something. He was about to do something through them that they couldn't even see. They had no idea where God would go with this. But isn't it good to know that no matter how many times the devil tries, no matter how many times the world takes an effort no matter how many things are against the church is that God looked at 11 God called preachers that were about 10 days away from being filled with God the Spirit he said you boys may not see it but I'm starting with you I'm going to heaven I can raise my hands in victory because I know in 2,000 years wherever how long it's going to be that when I come back I'm looking bless God hang on a minute I'm looking at more than 11 saved people He said, I'm looking for a church. They're going to plant the seed. They're going to start it. Amen. But I'm coming back to millions on every corner of the earth. Bless God, I'm coming back to a church. Amen. Woo! Glory. He could lift his hands. It looks should have been one of the worst days of their life, but God's saying, I'm just getting you boys started. You're going to preach on every street corner. You're going to establish the whosoever will gospel. You're going to write out the Bible, and I'm going to tell you the words to say. You're going to offer a Bible. You're going to offer a church. You're going to show them the cross. You're going to tell them what that cross really means. You're going to tell them what I did. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to sit down on the right hand of my Father. I'm going to establish the throne of grace but boys what you're going to do is I'm not going to be down here to tell them but you're going to be my voice you're going to be my lips you're going to be my words you're going to tell them just exactly that I went to the cross I died the death I rose the third day I defeated death hell and the grave you're going to tell them there is a church and if I had them on the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church He could lift those hands because he could see what they started. And it's God this morning that looks down from upon high and he surveys all those that meet in his name. Whether we be Baptist or Pentecostal, whether we be Methodist, I mean, it ain't about all that. It's about the fact of it is, is what started with 11 God called preachers and it's 20 and 23 the best I can remember. And the fact is, they're still preaching the gospel. They're still meeting in my name. They're still lifting holy hands toward heaven. But 
because my church walks in victory and not in defeat. They're still telling what the cross means. They're talking about what I did at Calvary and how I came out of the grave on that third and appointed day. He could lift his hands to 11 preachers because he saw today while he was talking to them. Because you see, one day he was planting his church with 11 seeds. They all had names. They all had ministries. They all had purpose. But thank God they all had victory. He said, I'll start with you. I ain't even got to the part about God the Holy Ghost. I don't know if I can hold up for it or not, but here it goes. <clears throat> he lifted up his hands in victory. I want to remind you of something. Look at that cross. Do you see it? You see what the Romans saw. What the wicked that said, just give us Barabbas, crucify him, let his blood be on us and our children. You see, what they saw is he was nailed to keep him on the cross. What they saw was the death of a man dying for a good cause. What they saw was a man beaten and bloody and somewhat broken. A man whose message was going to die with him on the cross on a place called Golgotha. But let me tell you what Jesus saw. The nails couldn't hold him. Heaven was going to rescue him, but he wouldn't say a word to him. What Jesus was saying it looks like I'm nailed to the cross but what he had was his hands was lifted up they what it was the love he had for us his arms were spread out they weren't they, they weren't just nailed there to keep them there he was there on purpose because what Jesus saw was the fact is he came to shed his blood but once he shed it he didn't need it anymore he came to lay down his life because bless God he knew he'd pick it back up on that third day it was God that stared death and the devil and every demon in hell that Satan gathered up and said let's all come together we'll put him on the cross we'll keep him on the cross we'll call, put a, a stone and roll him and keep him in the grave but thank God he saw past all that because see he saw the third day when they couldn't see a third day he told everybody he said, I'm coming out of there on the third day. I'll tear that temple, but I'll bless God. I'll build it on that third day. They couldn't get it. It was a mystery to his disciples. It was a mystery to most of his followers. Only him and heaven knew that on that third day is why he had his hands spread up on the cross. He's laid on that cross in victory. Amen. Amen. The devil couldn't hold him. Death couldn't keep him. The grave couldn't keep him in the grave. Because he lifted up his hands because he could see farther than what they could. No, those he saw that third day. Could you imagine what a fight and a ruckus was going on inside that tomb? It's spiritual. Nobody could see. The devil said, death, do you have him? Oh, I've got him. The one that took him out of my hand those three times in the Bible, he said, he's dead. I've got him. <coughs> he's mine. Death said, I'll keep him right here. The devil said, roll the stone. They can't come in and get him. He's mine. The grave doesn't let you go, amen. But you see, what they didn't understand was this. The fact, how could he lift his hands? Because in 10 days, Jesus knew that those men who cowered twice in a room, he had to go get through, go through the wall because they had the room locked. That man, that would deny him. That man, that would say, I just don't believe it until I could see it and, and everything. And the devil, devil said, he's not got much to work with. They're already denying him. They're already saying it ain't him. They're already saying if I can't touch and see, the nail scars I'll never believe he rose from the dead and the devil said he ain't got much to work with but what Jesus saw is the fact that was then but thank God in 10 days that same power that raised me from the dead he said I'm sending down from heaven how could he lift up his hands how could he be glad how could he shout about it how could he have the confidence and those men who have been somewhat of a disappointment those men who had failed those men who 
who had become weak because God knew that the most powerful force was God the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would be theirs one day. How many in this church this morning knows that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, He came on the day of Pentecost as 120 got filled with Him every day on the day in that upper room. And thank God when you get saved, the same power that raised Him from the dead lives inside you and me. That's how He can lift up His hands. Because He knew the gift they were about to receive. And God looked at them in confidence and said, boys, you got to get past your weaknesses. You got to get past your sin. You got to get past your disappointments and your discourages. We're all going to have them. And what you got to concentrate on is the fact of it is I overcame death. I overcame the devil. I overcame the the last enemy to be defeated was death. And death does hurt. And death will make you cry. And death will make your heart broken. And thank God that there's an upside to it. And the fact of it is if you've been born again on the other side of death is a robe of white. Is a body that'll never die. Is is an eternity in heaven. It's when God releases us from down here and takes up into His presence up in glory. You know what God is saying? I can lift my hands separate from these boys because I know that what they're about to receive, they can't buy it. They can't get it. They can't rent it. It's a gift that comes from heaven. What God is trying to say that my New Testament church, my preachers are going to preach with the power of Almighty God. They're going to get the anointing from upon high. Why everybody that's saved is going to get a gift from heaven. That's why he could lift his hands. I'm about done, I think. You see, he faced all that. But he's about to do something that never existed in all of eternity. Do you want to know what it is? I got one little tiny bit of yeah. So I'm going to ask it again. Do you want to know what it is? That's a whole lot better. That just got you out of here at least 10 minutes quicker. You see, he's about to do something that he has never done. This world never had it. Is that when he leaves and he ascends on that glory cloud up into heaven, he's about to sit down on his throne on the right hand of the Father. And you know what He's going to do? It's not just any throne. It's not the throne that He rules in His kingdom. This is a throne that He establishes grace. The world has never experienced grace. They knew the law. They knew the penalties. They knew the judgment. They knew the failures. They knew the inadequacies. But what they didn't know is that there was a God and He would dispense this to one of the most beloved Beloved and well-known preachers in this entire world. His name is Paul. He's God's apostle to the Gentiles. He was one of the toughest preachers in the Bible. And when he asked God, he said, I've got a thorn. It's a messenger of the devil. And three times he prayed, pull it out, pull it out, pull it out. God said, no, I won't, no, I won't, no, I won't. But what I will do is give you grace. And Paul, he got the, he got a good taste of the grace. And what Paul wrote down. He said, I've got something that I live by. He said, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. What I am telling you is this, whatever you're going through, there's more than enough grace to get you through it. I don't care how long the valley, I don't care how dark the time, how the storm rages, how many days it lasts, what season you're going through. And the fact of it is we've got a Savior that sits on the right hand of the Father that knows my name and your name that knows what we're going through and he'll dispense more than enough grace. It's never just a little bit. It's more than just enough. It's more than enough. Amen. He knew they'd be all right because he was going to sit down and immediately start giving them grace. Not only will they have heaven living on the inside of them, but they'd have the grace to go through it. One more and I'm about done. They're about to be filled with the Spirit of Heaven because He's about to give them something they did not have. They've watched Him do it. You even had one apostle that could raise the dead. The apostle Peter, her name was Tabitha. 
You don't find that the others did. But you'll find that they healed sickness. Do you remember that part in the Bible that we're healed by his stripes? Do you remember that? Don't start getting nervous on me yet. I'm preaching good. Do you understand that God gave us the God gift of the Holy Spirit, did he not? Yes, Let me ask you a question. When you're sick and you're going through a sickness, when you get better, who gets you better, God or the medicine? All right, that's the question. That's the answer I've been looking for. You know how come he could lift his hands and go off and leave them? Because he knew that the sickness that he healed would come back. He knew that there would be others have the same sickness they did. He knew that others would walk in the same path. He knew there'd be others that had an issue of blood. There'd be others laying at the pool of Bethesda. There'd be others bowed over in the house of Almighty God. There'd be others that would die. There would be others that would have leprosy. And God was saying, I am giving you gifts because I know you're going through the same thing and the same problems that I did in my ministry. And if you pray, has God not healed the sick before? Has God not make you better? Has God not astounded the doctors when they've done all they can do? Yes, He has. Amen. 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 Y'all come get a verse invitation. You see, <clears throat> this day to day didn't catch Him by surprise, did it? No. Sometimes I wonder if I ask a question just to hear myself. There's times I don't know if I'm preaching a message or funeral. Amen. This morning, this morning right here, how many in this church realizes that you need to raise your hands in victory a lot more than you have been. Amen. Amen. Yes, we do. We all do. Yes. While we stand our feet. Amen.